Remember those Wiley X glasses you could buy at the BX over there with the, the padding around the, uh, around the eyes? I just loosened those two bolts up, left the nut on the end of the bolt so that I couldn't come up too far. But yeah, once you fight with that for a little bit, you'll have plenty of clearance. What's going on guys? Welcome back to the channel. As you can see, the oil pan is off of the 417 stroker in the D100 project. That means it's rear main seal time. Let's get to it. So in the case of these old Dodge pickups, and I believe any Dodge pickup with a V8, correct me if I'm wrong, leave a comment down below, let me know. But you can replace your rear main seal in these things without too much difficulty. All right, so the first thing you gotta do, obviously, is pull your pan. Now, on these trucks with a V8, whether it be a 318 or a 360s, the first few things you need to do. First, you gotta pull your starter. I got mine sitting there just on the header. Then, you gotta pull the cover off your transmission. Then, obviously, loosen all of your bolts that hold your oil pan on. And then what you're gonna need to do, you need to loosen your transmission mounts so you can get a jack up underneath the tail shaft of the transmission here and jack up the transmission. That'll give you the clearance you need to back your pan around that cross member and slide it out underneath the transmission housing. One more thing you're going to need to do, you can see I've got a jack on the front right there. I'll try to do this under the truck. I don't have a whole lot of room, so bear with me. You're going to need to jack up the front of your engine about an inch or two. Let me see if I can get a light in there to show you. Bear with me here. So again, there you can hopefully see the jack on the bottom of the, the crank pulley there. Um, and what I did to do to do mine, let me see if I can give you a good shot here. So the engine mounts that are right there, there's a bolt that comes through the bottom. All right, so I'm not sure how well this is gonna show up, but right up in there, on the bottom side of the engine mount is the bolt. It's kind of blurry. I can't really get my camera to focus on it. But what I did on both sides of the engine, I just loosened those two bolts up, left the nut on the end of the bolt so that I couldn't come up too far. And then I just jacked the front of the engine up, literally just like an inch. And that's because right up there, right on this side of the jack, you can see the main studs. Um, the two in the front there, the front of the oil pan was hitting those when I tried to remove it. So I had to jack the front of the engine up literally like an inch to clear those main studs. Um, and also, you also need to make sure that your engine is rotated in such a way, you see the weights, um, the counterbalance weights here on the crank. These need to be rotated so that they're up out of the way so that the pan has plenty of clearance to come out. Yeah, I mean, it's not that difficult. It's just, just kind of a hassle. But yeah, once you fight with that for a little bit, you'll have plenty of clearance to get the pan out. It took me a little bit to lift the front of the engine up. Um, I was kind of hesitant on that by lifting it by what would be the harmonic balancer, but my engine's internally balanced. So just lifting it by, by the front of the crank there, even just an inch. I was really kind of nervous about doing it that way, but do what you gotta do. Pan's out, oil pump is out. Now I'm ready to drop the, uh, the rear cap to get to the rear main seal. Try that again now, my mic is on. So after removing the two nuts on the rear cap studs, you can pull the main cap out. Now I did have to kind of whack on this a little bit with a rubberized dead blow hammer like that one there, just to kind of help break this thing free. And I was able to kind of shimmy it and pop it out. Now this is exactly how it came off. The only thing I did was I wiped down the ceiling surface a little bit, trying to see if I could determine where the leak was. Um, there was some oil here on the face of the rear main cap. Um, I did wipe that off, but I'm trying to determine where it looks like there might be a leak. I don't see anything, but again, this is exactly how it came out. You can see, you can see they left the rear main seal long on one end. So what that does is when this goes up inside the block, this side goes up in the block and then the, the corresponding half was left long coming down and it would come down into here. And that just helps with sealing. Um, a lot of guys will just put it in flush, put some RTV on here and then seal it. That's okay too. Um, 
you know, I prefer to do it this way. Again, that just kind of helps with sealing. It prevents, it's one less spot that you're, that you're um, less likely to get a leak at. They did have RTV on here just to seal the two uh, mating surfaces. I mean, you can, you can even still see the, the uh, rear of the oil pan gasket is still here in place. My new gasket is a one piece. I'll be getting to that in a little bit. Um, so yeah, so I'm gonna clean this up. I'm gonna remove this seal. Now, when it comes to getting the seal out of the block, and I do apologize for not filming under the truck. Um, I don't have the truck really jacked up all that far, so trying to film under there with, and lighting, and it's just really difficult. I do apologize. I will try to film more of the installation part. Um, Removal is pretty straightforward. So when it comes to removing the seal out of the block, I'm going to hit it with a, I got a brass punch. I'm going to punch up on one side and then as it protrudes like it is here I'll just grab that with a pair of needle nose pliers and hopefully just work it around the crank being really careful not to nick or scratch the crank or the ceiling surface in any way uh, I may not even need the punch because they did leave it long already I might be able to just grab that with some needle nose but we'll see when it comes to the reinstallation and I'll show this again later you have to be really careful with this seal right here. You gotta make sure you put it in the right way. There's a little lip on it or like a little, like a little joggle, a little flange almost that needs to be facing towards the engine. Otherwise, you're not gonna get a good seal and you'll just have to tear it all apart again later. So that's another reason why I didn't take anything apart yet. I wanna make sure that I get this orientation of the seal right here correct. Hopefully that'll show up well on camera i'm trying to get a good angle of the light there you go hopefully you can see that make sure that is orientated so that little lip faces towards the engine but i'm going to get back under the truck get the other seal out and then i'm going to work on cleaning up all the mating surfaces which the help of my uh handy dandy super scraper should hopefully make quick work of cleaning up all these mounting surfaces all right, so I've been working on the rear cap here, just trying to get the old rear main seal out of there, getting all the old RTV out of there, getting everything cleaned up, being real careful with that uh, main cap right there, or main bearing, just staying away from that, but just working on getting this groove cleaned out for the rear main seal. Now, if you have not picked up a super scraper yet, these things are so good. You know, I've seen other YouTubers talk about them, and no affiliation here. I finally broke down and got one for this specific project. And I'll tell you what, I am really glad that I did. This carbide tip has been great at getting a lot of that old RTV out of there, getting the surface cleaned up. And that edge, let me see if I can show this here. That square corner right there is so nice for getting down inside tight areas where the RTV sits down in that groove down there, right in the corner. And this thing made quick work, being able to work that out of there within five, 10 minutes. I've got that whole groove really nicely cleaned out, ready to accept the new rear main seal. I'll leave a link down below to the super scraper. Again, no affiliation here. I bought this just for this project and I'm glad I did. The, the hype is real guys. I mean, like I said, I've seen a lot of people talking about these. I can't, I need to get the other sizes now because that is so good, so good. All right, so I've been up underneath the truck for a while, working on cleaning up the mounting area for the rear main, rear main cap here, rear main seal. I punched out the old rear main seal. And again, I just, if this was upside down, get back in there, I just took a punch punched it out enough that I can get a good grip on it with a pair of pliers and then pulled it out around the crank, slid in the new one. So that's all ready to go. I do still have a lot of cleaning up to do for the mounting surface of the oil pan and the oil pan itself. But I wanna go ahead and start getting the rear main seal and rear cap back in place so that the RTV can start to set up. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to put a light coat of RTV down inside this uh, recess here where the rear main seal goes. And I'm gonna get the rear main seal in place. I'm also gonna coat this mounting surface here and same on this side. Since this is the back of the block, make sure that's all nice and sealed and then get this back in place. 
So I'm gonna do that now. All right, so here's the, the rear main seal kit that I'm gonna be using. It's a Felpro BS40094, and it comes with a small tube of RTV, and there's the other half of the rear main seal. So what I wanna do, like I said, I'm, I don't need a whole lot. I just wanna put a thin bead of RTV down inside this chamfer. Just gonna just gonna help hold that seal in place, and it'll also help prevent anything from any oil from coming up around the back side of this seal. Just put a light coat in there. And then again, here's that little lip. Hopefully that shows up well enough on camera. That lip needs to face towards the engine block, towards the bearing. That can go down inside there. And then I've already got the other one in place and it's already recessed a little bit on this side or it protrudes a little bit. So it should just go right back in like that. And then what I'm also gonna do, now right now it's gonna not wanna sit because of that RTV, but once I get this in place, again, I'm doing this now so that this has time to set up. I'm going to also coat this mounting surface with some RTV just to help it, help it seal against the block. And then since I've been cleaning on this thing, my bearing is all dry now, what I wanna do is add some of the assembly lube. I'm just gonna add it to the main bearing. It may not be necessary, but I just, better safe than sorry. I could probably use regular oil, but this stuff's nice and thick. I have a feeling I haven't even opened this one yet. Yep. I'm just add some of that to the bearing. Just for a little added protection. All right, and then we can go uh, slap this back in the truck. All right, so hopefully you guys can get a, can see this well enough. I got the, the rear bearing, the rear cap ready to go back in. So, I'm going to slide this up in place. Try to anyway. There we go. And then the nuts for the cap. Just gonna get these started on there. I thought those were different nuts, so I took it off to begin with. Oh well. But I'll just run these up. Should have grabbed the torque wrench while I was out there. Go grab my uh, my torque wrench. Right. And like I said, these get torqued to 85 foot pounds. There we go. All right, now with that done, 
Um, I'll be able to install the oil pump later, but I need to finish cleaning up the mounting surface for the oil pan, and that will give that RTV time to set up for that rear seal. Bit of a side note, guys. If you're ever underneath a vehicle doing anything, especially like cleaning off old oil pan gaskets and you're scraping all that crud off and it's falling all over your face, get yourself a pair of safety glasses like these. These are, these are Carhartt and they have that. So for any of you guys, former veterans that you know deployed to places like Iraq and Afghanistan back in the day, remember those Wiley X glasses you could buy at the BX over there with the, with the padding around the, uh, around the eyes? Yeah, these Carhartts have that. And these have kept pretty much everything out of the eyes today. I mean, these things are amazing. They're comfortable. They sweat a little bit because they're right up against your face. But just, yeah, a little side note, get yourself a good pair of safety glasses that really seal around your eyes. All right, so right now I got about 95% of all the old gasket material off. I have a little bit more up front uh, on the bottom of the timing chain cover that I need to get off. But everything back here has been pretty well cleaned up. So I'm gonna go ahead and remount my oil pump. Now, I haven't done anything to the oil pump. I didn't tear it apart, nothing like that. Um, like I said, there's less than a thousand miles on this rebuild. So I didn't worry about the oil pump. The screen looked good, everything's fine with it. So I'm just gonna go ahead and remount it. I'm gonna use some, just some medium strength uh, Loctite to reattach the you know when i run the bolts in and the bolts that hold it will get torqued to 35 foot pounds once once everything is oop, knock the light is in place so we're going to go ahead and get this up here i've got the bolts i need to put a little bit of loctite on these things I'm trying to do this upside down and one-handed this isn't this isn't exactly uh, an ideal situation here, but it is what it is, you know. I'm sure, like like most of you working on my garage floor, you know, you make do with what you got. All right, let's get this thing back up in place. So, try to rotate this one-handed. Now the. Uh, the drive from the distributor should line right back up. There it goes. I said I haven't rotated, haven't done anything to it. So everything should just line right up. And it did. I got the one bolt started. I'm going to go ahead and get some Loctite on my other one. Then this is just some medium strength Loctite. Don't need to go all ooga dooga with it that up there so the the drive from the distributor lined right back up with the pump everything lined up i said nothing was uh nothing was really maneuvered now of course i gotta find my right socket that i had this thing. It's the same size of course not what did i do with the with the socket i gotta find that there it is it should be this one of course, this is probably the one for the oil pan bolts. Nope, that's the right one. <sighs> Hands are all covered in oil. This is fun. Uh, yeah, that's what I wanted. Working upside down and backwards and yeah. You guys know the joy of this. It's just good times. Everybody. I'm not going to drive it up there tight with the impact, but I'm just going to get them up there snug. Take it up slow. All right. Everything feels like it's seating up there right. Should be good. And then I'll just have to get a torque wrench, like I said, and torque those bolts down to 35 
foot pounds and of course you probably can't see anything because of the the housing there so let's see let's see here hopefully i can give you guys a better shot so there are the bolts in place these two right here and they'll get torqued down to 35 foot pounds so oil pump back in place now that I got the entire bottom side of the engine all cleaned off, I'm ready to start installing my oil pan gasket. So this is a Felpro OS 34409R. This says it's actually made for like an early to mid 90s like Magnum engine, but the Dodge Magnum engines and the LA series engines on the bottom end are virtually identical. So this should hopefully work. Um, I wanna use this instead of the like the four piece cork and rubber gasket that was on there previously thought i'd give this thing a try I said it's all single piece and it's got you know the the ceiling ribs on there so hopefully you should only need a little rtv in the corners and be good to go now if you've ever done an oil pan gasket with the engine still in the vehicle i'm sure we've all made alignment pins such as this this is just a 5 16 bolt the head cut off and then a slot cutting the top for a flat tip screwdriver. I'm sure we've all made some of these. You run these up into the engine, you put your oil filter on or oil filter, oil gasket with some uh, gasket adhesive to hold it in place. And then this aligns your gasket and then you can put your pan on too, keeps everything aligned and just makes it real easy to install a gasket like this. I just found these, these, are Felpro pan snap-ups. What these do, and they, this is a 5 16 they make these in a 5 16 an M6, and an M8 for you metric people out there. But what these do, these screw up into your engine block, and then these little tabs, you push your filter onto pla into place, filter, I keep saying filter, your gasket. So with this, if this was screwed into your engine, take your gasket, And now your gasket is held in place. Not only that, but then you follow it up with your pan and it holds your pan in place. Keeps everything aligned, doesn't take any gasket adhesive. And then you put, so you put one of these in each corner underneath the engine. I already have the other three installed. Put your gasket in place, put your pan in place, keeps everything aligned, makes it really easy to get everything where it needs to be, perfectly aligned. You don't have to worry about your gasket moving around on you at all. I'll leave a link to these down below. Like I said, these are made by Felpro Snap Ups. And I think, I think a set of four is like seven bucks, something like that. Again, I'll leave, I'll leave some links down below. But let's get back under the truck, start getting this stuff installed. All right, so I've got two of the alignment pins here in the back. Um, I can't put them on the front yet because the oil pan won't be able to slide up under the or over the cross member with those with the uh, pins in place. So I'll have to put that up there and then finagle these into place um, once I have the gasket and the oil pan in place there. But I got the two back here so that will at least keep it aligned back here. So now I can grab my gasket, which is right here. Slide this up over my cross member, let the front just kind of dangle, and the back ones, you just pop those into place on the pins. I've already got some RTV up here over the back and in the corner, so that'll also help hold the back up in place. Those holes are like nicely aligned now. So now I can slide my, my oil pan in place, put the two front pins in, and then screw it all down. All right, so hopefully this shows up okay. Um, I'm kind of working upside down and backwards here, but now that I've got all the uh, pan bolts in place, I only have a couple of them like just very loosely snug down just to kind of suck the pan up into place. Nothing's torqued yet. But I've got all the bolts in place, everything's aligned. I can now go ahead and remove these Felpro snap-ups, I just screw out either by, finger, by hand or with a 
They got a slot in the top for a standard screwdriver. Pop that out and then replace it with another bolt. It's that simple, guys. Great, great product, man. These, these Felpro snap-ups are great. Um, like I said, on the front, I had to keep them out until I got the, the gasket and the pan up in place um, just because they hung down too low, wouldn't let the pan slide past. But once everything was in place, I just put these up in, threaded them in, and it kept everything aligned for me to get the pan button down. Now I can torque all these down. Um, obviously, I don't know the torque off the top of my head. I'll look that up. But once they're torqued, be ready to uh, add some oil and make sure I don't have any leaks. Well, this is not where I wanted to leave this video. Yeah. So here's what happened. Got everything back together and then I disconnected the ignition, disconnected the fuel pump, and then I hooked up a remote switch. That way I could just turn the truck on, crank the engine over, without having to worry about it lighting, and I could watch the oil pressure gauge for pressure. Nada. Zip. Not. It didn't move. So, started trying to investigate, took the valve cover off, cranked the engine, wanted to see oil come up, you know, through the head. Nothing. So, took everything apart. The only thing I could think of is that it's the gasket that goes on the mounting surface of the oil pump where it connects to the bottom of the main cap. Um, I did hook up a drill with an Allen head to the pump and spun it. And it does pump oil. So the pump I know is good, which I expected. The pump is basically brand new. I'm just thinking that gasket failed somehow, some way. Um, so it looks like I'm gonna have to make one. I've been looking, trying to find a new gasket. Um, you have to buy a pump to get the gasket, it looks like. I'm not gonna buy a new pump. This is a new pump. So I'll probably end up making a gasket. Um, now I did have to order a new oil pan gasket and that's only because uh, the RTV I can't use a scraper or anything to clean it uh, because it's a rubber gasket it'll just chew it up so and because the RTV is not fully set up yet it's yeah it's just a big old mess so I I'm waiting on a new oil pan gasket yeah this is Really not how I wanted to leave this video, but it is what it is. I appreciate you guys for watching. Hit that subscribe, hit the bell, and I'll see you on the next one.